I'll take everything off. Please don't charge me. I don't want to go to jail. Please, sir. I don't, I don't want you to take everything off. Please, sir. Not tonight. Please. I Imagine this. A tipsy girl, high on liquid courage, decides to try her luck and seduce an unsuspecting cop. Can she actually win over the heart of this tough law enforcer? But what happens when alcohol meets authority and leads to an unpredictable and potentially hilarious situation? And how do law enforcement officers handle these unexpected advances while maintaining their professionalism? Join us as we dive into a jaw-dropping investigation of the unexpected, at times, hilarious encounters between law enforcement and those under the influence. January 15th, 2023 was a late night for Officer Nathan Smith of the Bentonville Police Department, who was on the prowl in his marked patrol unit. Little did he know, he was about to witness some serious driving drama on the 2200 block of Southeast Walton Boulevard. As Officer Smith cruised along, he spotted a black SUV meandering in the inside lane ahead of him. The driver of the SUV seemed to be playing a little too close to the yellow lines, zigzagging and dancing like nobody was watching. With his emergency lights flashing, the officer initiated a traffic stop on the vehicle, prompting it to come to a halt in the parking lot of credit cars, situated at 3302 South Walton Boulevard. Officer Smith, being the observant officer that he is, noticed the bloodshot and watery eyes of the driver, whom we now know as the one and only Brooke Teague. Yes, uh, I was just picking up my friend. Okay. Four, nine, four. I was just picking up my friend from Bentonville. Yeah, okay. But it doesn't end there. The aroma of alcohol filled the air as Officer Smith approached Brooke's window. Clearly, this wasn't just a case of someone being sleepy from their late night shift at JJ's Grill. Brooke's speech was slurred, and her actions, well, let's just say they were more like those of a tipsy tightrope walker than a responsible driver. Officer Smith, following protocol, asked Brooke to take the famous standardized field sobriety test. 1996. Alright Brooke, hey, would you want to do some field sobriety tests to make sure, sure you're good to go? Yeah, Alright. Do you want me to turn the car off? What do you want to do? You can leave it on or run uh, or I'm keep it warm. Go back in front of my car for yeah. me, okay? No guns or knives on you? Uh, no. Did you know that these tests are designed to check if someone's had one too many sips of the forbidden brew? Let the games begin. First up, the horizontal gaze nystagmus test, or as we like to call it, the smooth pursuit challenge. But here's where it gets amusing. Brooke couldn't contain her giggles, and that set the officer off laughing too. You're making me giggle, I'm sorry. <laughs> He makes me giggle too, it's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was so contagious that they had to restart the test, all in good humor, of course. It turns out Brooke's eyes weren't as smooth as she thought. Officer Smith spotted some interesting eye movements that hinted at a not so sober state. Next, the walk and turn test. Imagine trying to walk a straight line while demonstrating your best balancing act. Well, Brooke's rendition was more like a wobbly dance routine. You understand the test? Yes, sir. All right, remember to keep your arms at your side, okay? You can begin whenever you're ready. Heel to toe? Not for her. Missed steps, arm waving, and even a wrong turn. It was like watching a comedy show. Oh, but the fun doesn't end there. The one leg stand test came into play. Brooke tried her best to defy gravity, but her foot quickly found its way back to the ground, and her arms were the trusty crutches she needed. All right, whenever you're ready. Keep your arms at your side, okay? Out of your pockets. One second, two second, three second, four second, five second, six second, seven second, eight second, nine second. Nine second. 10 seconds, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Alas, Brooke's performance didn't earn her any standing ovations. Instead, she was granted an all expenses paid trip to the Bentonville Police Department, courtesy of Corporal Quentin Reinhardt, who joined the party to conduct an inventory of the vehicle. And guess what they found? A rather unwelcome surprise in the form of suspected vomit chilling in the cup holders. Oh, it's puke. It smells like puke. Look. It's like puke or something. It is puke. I'm gonna throw up. I didn't realize it until just now. That is puke. I'm gonna fucking throw up. 
not the kind of souvenirs one would hope for after a night out. The grand finale? Brooke, having been read her rights, bravely agreed to blow a breath sample into the magic breathalyzer. Drum roll, please. And there it was, a 0.14% reading, confirming Officer Smith's suspicions. In the end, the night's escapades led to Brooke's arrest for driving while intoxicated, and also the suspension of her license. Next up, we have a story that takes us to the eerie hours of 3.53 a.m. on a spooky Sunday, October 30th, 2022. Officer Klein from the Sarasota Police Department is on the prowl, patrolling the city of Northport, Sarasota County. All seems normal until he spots a black Hyundai sedan playing a game of intersection chicken at the crossroads of North Cranberry Boulevard and North Toledo Blade Boulevard. Now, Officer Klein, being the diligent officer that he is, runs a check on the car's license plate. He found that the plates are way past their expiration date, and to add fuel to the fire, the registered owner, Naomi Furr, has a suspended driver's license. Ouch! That, the tags on the car, is the car registered to you? Yes, sir. Okay, the tags on the car expired back in March? Yes, sir. Or April, I'm sorry. Um, and your license is suspended. Did you know your license was suspended? I apologize about that. Okay. Um. Did you know that Naomi was dressed in her Halloween best during this whole fiasco? Yep, she was rocking a snazzy yellow wristband, probably from one of those local bars. But wait, there's more. Officer Klein soon discovers something rather unsettling about our Halloween reveler. Her eyes are bloodshot and watery, and her speech is just a tad slurred. Looks like Naomi might have had a bit too much spooky spirits at the party. Ever the inquisitive officer, Officer Klein decides to investigate further. As he chats with Naomi, he can't ignore the strong sense of alcohol wafting from her breath and person. And when questioned about her license, Naomi openly admits she's aware it's suspended and claims to be trying to fix it. Good intentions, but it won't save her now. An insurance suspension, and you have like four other suspensions for failure to pay traffic fine. You know you got pay. You know you got pay tickets. Huh? I said, you know you gotta pay the tickets. I, I, well, I did pay them all, um, the ones that I applied for. I'm sorry. To test her sobriety, Officer Klein asks Naomi to step out of her vehicle. Naomi agrees to perform field sobriety exercises, but alas, they don't exactly paint her in a good light. Can you stand with your feet and heels together like this? Yes. Arms straight down your side. The very tip of the pen right here where my finger is, can you see that? Yep. Actually, let me kill my light so we're not, I'm not blinding you. I figure it's a little rude for you staring into that bright ass light. It's all good. So, right here, tip of my pen is. Yep. Okay? Yep. With your Officer Klein believes that there's probable cause that Naomi has committed two offenses driving under the influence and driving with a suspended license, knowingly at that. Naomi, driven by desperation, goes as far as suggesting that she'll remove her clothes just to avoid being charged by the officers. I don't want you to take everything off. Please, sir, not tonight, please. I, I'm gonna... Sh I out promise I'll have somebody pick... Officer Klein then decides to search Naomi's ride. Surprise, surprise. He discovers two small open containers of fireball whiskey and an empty white claw hard seltzer can chilling in the passenger compartment. Long story short, Naomi finds herself in the back seat of Officer Klein's patrol vehicle, and not in a good way, headed straight to the Sarasota County Jail. But the drama doesn't end there. Officer Klein politely asks Naomi to provide a breath sample, to which she firmly declines. Of course, Officer Klein informs Naomi of her implied consent rights, but she's not swayed. No breath sample for you, officer. And so, Naomi is booked and her beloved car is towed away by Talon Towing. Moving on, buckle up for a wild ride as we take you to Blue Ash, Ohio, where an incident involving an intoxicated woman and a patient with special needs is about to unfold. On a fateful day in May, 48-year-old Kelly Barton, an employee at the Ohio Valley Residential Services Group Home, found herself in a pickle. She was responsible for transporting a special needs patient when she crashed her vehicle. Yikes, not a great start, right? Body camera footage captured the chaotic scene, with officers trying to piece together what happened. Barton's co-worker, who rushed to the crash site, recounted that the patient claimed she had hit a lamppost before seeking refuge at a gas station. I've been at work since 7 o'clock this morning, so I don't know if she hit something in the middle or what, but Robert just keeps saying she hit a lamppost. Okay. And she said she had to avoid a hole. I don't know what this is. She shredded the back of that. She's she in the back popped. of my car. Well, she popped. Embrace yourselves for a twist. Barton was actually passed out in the back seat while the patient, Robert, was sitting up front. Oh. Hello there. 
What's her name? Kelly. Kelly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kelly? Yes? How are you doing? Good. As the officers try to figure out who was behind the wheel, they reviewed the gas station security footage, which confirmed Barton's position as the driver. What time is it? 20, 20, 30, 15, we'll say. 15, and then it's uh, 5:11. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Now the fun begins. Officers coaxing Barton out of the vehicle. It wasn't an easy task, let me tell you. After several minutes of persuasion, she finally stepped out, but things took an unexpected turn. Instead of cooperating, she decides to flirt with the first responders, which probably might have not been the best way to handle the situation. Responders. Look at your hands. Do you want the light squad to check you, ma'am? Yeah. Okay. Let them do what they got to do. Come on, boys. Even as they test her sobriety, Barton doesn't back down from her flirtatious antics, calling the workers handsome while they check her blood sugar levels. Now that's a bold move. I guess you could say she took drunk flirting to a whole new level. However, the officers remain steadfast. Conducting field sobriety tests, unsurprisingly, Barton's performance was far from impressive. She even admitted she didn't have a home address and stayed at a shelter. Eventually, the inevitable happened, and Barton was handcuffed. But that wasn't the end of her ordeal. Oh no, not yet. Getting her into the backseat of the squad car became an uphill battle for the officers. In the aftermath, Barton faced serious charges, operating a vehicle impaired, and patient endangerment. And as if that wasn't enough, she also lost her job as a transportation employee. It's a tough lesson to learn, but actions have consequences.